top goalie who played the angles. Who do you think is the greatest goalie in NHL history? Could it be Dominic Hasek, the guy that likes to come out of his crease and attack players? Or maybe Patrick Waugh, who also loves to play with the puck outside of his zone? Or is it Marty Brodeur? The man, the myth, the legend. Saves 100 pucks at once. And of course, as a Flames fan, I'm automatically thinking about Mika Kiprizov. But there's been some great puck stoppers in the history of the National Hockey League. So here are the top 15 of them who have ever played the game. And number 15 is none other than Johnny Bauer. Oh, with a miraculous save! Incredibly, Bauer did not establish himself as an NHL regular until he was 35 years old. But it was well worth the wait because Bauer went on to win four Stanley Cups with the Maple Leafs and he had three straight, starting in 1962 and ending in 1964. But despite his late start, he still managed to win 250 National Hockey League games. He had a 922 save percentage and went on to win two Veznas as the top goaltender in the league. Bauer was probably the best goalie to ever use a poke check and he played until he was 45. But number 14 has one of the best nicknames for a goalie, Mr. Zero. Frank Brimzik exploded onto the scene with a spectacular rookie year in 1938-39 as a member of the Boston Bruins. He led the league with 33 wins, having a 1.56 goals against average and 10 shutouts. That year, he won the Vesna, the Calder Trophy for being Rookie of the Year, and was a first team All-Star. Brimzik capped off the season by backstopping the Bruins to the Stanley Cup. One of the first American-born NHL stars, the native of Eveleth, Minnesota, finished his 10-season career with all but one being in Boston. He accumulated 252 wins, a 2.70 goals against average, 40 shutouts, two Stanley Cups, and of course, two Vestas. But number 13 was sometimes overshadowed by his older brother. Yet, Tony Esposito was impressive enough in his own right. While Big Brother Phil reached the Hall of Fame by scoring goals, Tony got there by preventing him. And he also had an unbelievable rookie season. In 1969, with the Chicago Blackhawks, Esposito led the league in wins with 38, a 932 save percentage, and 15 shutouts, winning the Vesna and Calder trophies. He also finished second for voting for the Hart Trophy, which goes to the league MVP, and this is rarely a goaltender. Overall, this man had 423 wins, 76 of them being shutouts, and three Vesnas in his 16 season career. At number 12, this player was great during the regular season, but even greater in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Turk Broda led the Toronto Maple Leafs to four Stanley Cups in the 1940s, and over his career, Broda had 60 playoff wins, 13 postseason shutouts, and 1.98 goals against in the Stanley Cup playoffs. He wasn't too shabby in the regular season though, with 304 career wins and 2.53 goals against average with two Vezinas. Number 11 also saved his best for the postseason, Billy Smith. This guy backstopped the New York Islanders to four straight Stanley Cup victories in 1980 to 1983. And not only did he defend those champions, but he also defended his space in the crease by swinging his goal stick and occasionally taking it another step further with his fists. Smith's record in Stanley Cup playoff games was 88 to 36, and he won the Conn Smythe Trophy as the most valuable player in 83. As far as the regular season is concerned, Smith won 305 games and a Vesna. But here's where we get to the real action, the top 10. And here at number 10, this guy is still a celebrity in the city where he led his team to consecutive Stanley Cups almost 50 years ago, Bernie Perron. You never see that face, he won't take that mask off until he's really 0.75. Won the cup with the Philadelphia Flyers in 1974 and 75 and was spectacular in those two seasons. In those two seasons, 
Perron had 47 and 44 wins. He had goals against averages of 1.89 and 2.04, posted 12 shutouts each season and won the Vesna Trophy in both. His playoff goals against average in those two seasons were 2.02 and 1.89. Perron had a combined six playoff shutouts over those two seasons and was the playoffs most valuable player in both years. Now, the overall numbers and statistics for the goaltender who is number nine on our list may not seem that impressive, but the only stat that matters as far as Grant Furr is concerned is the four Stanley Cups. Furr was the go-to netminder for the high-powered Edmonton Oilers that featured Wayne Gretzky, Mark Messier, and Paul Coffey. In the 80s, this was the highest scoring era in the history of the National Hockey League, and that didn't seem to be a concern to Mr. Furr. While Furr likely gave up more goals than any other goaltender on this list, again, because it was the high scoring era of hockey, he never allowed one that allowed the Oilers opponents to get back into the game, especially in the playoffs. Furr won 74 games in the playoffs and 403 during the regular seasons and a Vesna. Unfortunately, number eight did not play for a long time. But during that time, Bill Dernan took home a lot of the hardware. Dernan played only seven seasons for the Montreal Canadiens from 43 to 50, but won six Vesnas and two Stanley Cups. Dernan's career was cut short due to a nervous condition that really didn't respond well when playing in the National Hockey League. But overall, he had 208 wins, a 2.34 goals against average, and 34 shutouts. And in 45 playoff games, Dernan's goal against average was 2.07. And unfortunately, number seven also had a really short career for the Montreal Canadiens. And Ken Dryden's numbers were even more impressive than Dernan's in his short stint. In eight seasons from 1970 to 79, Dryden won five Vesnas and six Stanley Cups. He wasn't getting carried either as he won the Conn Smythe Trophy as playoff MVP. As a great goalie, just like he was, Dryden always had interest beyond hockey. He played and graduated from Cornell and retired in 1979, after helping Montreal win four consecutive cups and to pursue a law degree which he earned. Dryden then went on to become a notable author and a politician. He was a member of the House of Commons in Canada. But before all that, Dryden still won 258 National Hockey League games. Mr. Goalie. Now I know we've all heard of the name Mr. Hockey. Gordy Howe, but Glenn Hall was the mister of the goaltenders. He won over 400 games, two Vesnas and two Cups, but those aren't the two things that he should be most remembered for. First, is that Hall started at 502 consecutive games in goal from 1955 to 1963. He also threw up before these contests and every other single game he started in the NHL. Hall finished his 18 season career with a 2.50 goals against average and a .918 save percentage. In addition to being a great and decorated goaltender, number five is also in part responsible for being one of the biggest pieces of equipment for modern goaltenders. Yeah, can you believe they ever played without a mask? Along with 437 wins, six Vesnas, and six Stanley Cups, Jacques Plante was the first netminder to regularly wear a mask. Plante first donned a mask in a game on November 1st, 1959, after suffering a really bad cut nose and lip in the first period of a game. Plante had already been secretly using custom-made fiberglass masks in practices and exhibition games, and he refused to go back on the ice unless he had a mask on. Plant was the first goalie to win the Vesna and Hart Trophy as league MVP in the same season, accomplishing the feat in 1961. Also, five of Plant's Stanley Cups came in consecutive fashion as he backstopped the Montreal Canadiens to championships from 1956 to 60. I just gotta say this. Number four has probably had the most unique goaltender style in NHL history. Dominic Hasek stopped the puck in any way that he could using whatever body part that was most convenient to do it. Hasek won six Vesnas, two Hart Trophies, and two Stanley Cups. He won both the Vesna and Hart Trophies in consecutive seasons, 1996 and 1997. Hasek's competitiveness and work ethic were legendary, and he had 2.20 goals against average and 9.22 save percentage in his 16-season career. He also was a fan of injuring players whenever he could. Number three overcame physical ailments, injuries, and psychological issues to hold the career record for wins and shutouts when his career ended. 
The career of Terry Sawchuck was simply unbelievable. He was unable to extend his left arm to full length because of a childhood injury. Sawchuck also battled the psychological strain of starting every game in net for the Detroit Red Wings and Boston Bruins in the 1950s. But after his first five seasons starting in the year 1950, he had probably the most dominant stretch for a goaltender in league history. His goals against average was under 2.0 and each season he won a total of 190 games and had 56 shutouts. He won the Calder, he won three Veslas and backstopped the Red Wings to three Stanley Cups during that span. He was at his best during the 1952 playoffs as Detroit swept two series in four games to capture the cup. Sawchuck only allowed five goals in the eight games played for a 0.62 goals against average and had four shutouts. Unfortunately, he died in an accident involving a New York Rangers teammate after the 1969 season. At the time, he had 447 wins and 103 shutouts, which were all-time NHL records. But the goalie that broke Sawchuck's win record is at number two. In addition to his 551 wins, which is second all-time, Patrick Waugh won three Vesna trophies, three Smythe trophies, and four Stanley Cups. His 247 games played and 151 wins are the most among goaltenders in Stanley Cup history. Waugh sometimes infuriated opponents with his apparent arrogance, but he also brought an it factor. And he had very much charisma that no other goalie had. And last but not least, at number one, the best goalie in NHL history broke both Sawchuk and Waugh's records. Martin Broder even scored three goals in his career, including a playoff goal. Broder combined a number of styles and was one of the best puck handling goaltenders in history. He was the focal point of the defense first strategy, playing with the New Jersey Devils for the greater majority of his career. Broder won 691 times and 120 of those wins were shutouts during his 22 season in the NHL. He also won 4 Vesnas and 3 Stanley Cups. Broder played 205 playoff games and 113 of them were wins second only to Waugh. So there you have it, the 15 best goaltenders in NHL history. Which one of these goaltenders are your favorites? Are some of the more recent goalies potentially caliber for being on this list themselves, like Henrik Lundqvist or Carey Price? You could probably even make an argument for Marc-Andre Fleury or even Jonathan Quick. But leave a comment below what your list is and if you strongly agree or disagree with our ranking. And click this box here to watch the craziest goalie versus player moments. If you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow. And see you next time.